Um, so, uh, in continuation of uh, the lecture on memory, uh, the intention is now to try to dig a little bit deeper down into the mechanisms underlying learning and uh, memory. And uh, a good starting point, as uh, I was saying a little while ago, is to start off with uh, this lovely animal, uh, the Aplysia, um, which is in many ways um, the animal which has uh, made a foundation for our current understanding of the molecular basis for uh, learning and memory. Uh, it has several advantages in when turning to, to uh, trying to understand learning and, and memory at the molecular level. First of all, it's a relatively simple animal. It has simple behavior. One of the main behaviors it has is when it is threatened, it will uh, release ink in order to protect itself from uh, an animal that's trying to eat it. Uh, the other protective mechanism is that it normally has its uh, respiratory system placed here in the back and it has the ability to retract that respiratory system into the body in order to protect it. So these two uh, mechanisms are relatively simple reflexes. So when the skin of the animal is touched, uh, it will release ink and the respiratory uh, organs will be retracted into the body. And it's possible to uh, describe those reflexes uh, relatively detailed uh, also uh, by making a uh, relatively simple uh, preparation where the neurons which are involved in creating this uh, reflex and the, the different organs are taken out of the body of, of uh, uh, the animal and, be, and put in sort of a, an experimental setup as uh, shown here in the figure. Uh, which means that it's possible to uh, study it uh, in the la laboratory and look at both the behavior and the changes in uh, the activity of the uh, neurons. Uh, the other huge advantage here is that uh, there are relatively few neurons involved uh, and all of them are located in a ganglion uh, in uh, the body of, of uh, the animal. So it doesn't really have a a brain as such which is involved in this. Uh, the different parts of its body are controlled by different ganglia which are relatively separated from each other. There, there is of course some communication ensuring some coordination of uh, activity in, in the whole body of uh, the animal. But basically uh, this reflex is uh, coordinated at uh, the sort of segmental level uh, without any communication that uh, uh, with other parts of the nervous system. So it's possible to um, study this uh, reflex in various ways. Uh, the most straightforward way is simply to uh, touch the skin several times and uh, record uh, the responses in the different uh, sensory neurons and motor neurons as well as interneurons which have connections to the sensory and motor neurons in, in various ways. So it's possible to uh, record from all of the system. Then what you can do is to, uh, at the behavioral level, study uh, how uh, this uh, response, either the withdrawal of the uh, respiratory systems or the release of ink, uh, for instance, habituates. If you continue touching the skin of the animal, it will slowly uh, stop uh, retracting as much as it used to do, simply because if you keep touching it, uh, the response will uh, diminish, uh, as it is shown here. To begin with, you have a strong retraction of uh, the respiratory systems. If you continue touching the animal, you will see a decrease in the response. So this is a simple learning mechanism, which we see in many, many reflexes, that if we keep evoking the reflex, it will uh, become smaller and smaller with time. Then what you can do is you can sensitize the reflex which is similar to 
uh, in many ways, uh, what we spoke about uh, earlier on uh, could be uh, adding an electrical stimulus uh, as a painful stimulus, which will sensitize the reflex. So if you give an electrical stimulus together with uh, the time where you touch the skin, you will see that the retraction becomes bigger because of uh, this pairing with the electrical stimulus. And you can measure the responses in the sensory neuron and the motor neuron and if you have sensitization you can see that the responses become bigger, the action potential in the sensory neuron here becomes more long-lasting and the EPSP in a motor neuron becomes larger because of this. And you can basically uh, look at what are the molecular changes which takes place if you have a normal situation here uh, then you sensitize it and you can start looking into uh, the synapses and see what are actually the changes which uh, take place. So that there are all of these possibilities.